Hello, fellow Rosarians. Thank you for joining me. I want to talk to you about my favorite garden so far. When we think about a garden evoking emotion, I think about a symphony. And sometimes people who go to a symphony or a concert are moved to tears because it's so beautiful. That was my experience going to Lady Clark's garden. My garden is my symphony. And so going to Lady Clark's garden, she is a beautiful woman and she walked us around and showed us to all, showed us her gardens her when she created these gardens she created rooms a place where you felt a different theme in each room and when she first brought us in she showed us this beautiful landscape that reminded me of mine in that wide open space for the mind to have peace um, and so I really loved being on her patio and looking at the yard and it was so fun because she has cattle um, just beyond the property and they're kept in by something called a ha ha H-A-H-A -H -A. and it's just such a fun word but a ha ha is a very deep culvert or ravine that has been dug and it comes up to about chest height so from a distance uh, you cannot see that there's kind of like a, a barrier around the very far edge of the property and so the cows will come just to that and say hello and moo and then be on their way and so I, I love that idea of just, um, you know, having nature so close. You can hear the cows mooing through uh, the property and the gardens, and it's just so peaceful and serene. And then as you're moving through the property, I think there's just such peace and tranquility as you move through. The knot garden is impeccably put together. So I'm going to go ahead and show that to you, and I hope you enjoy it. So here we are at the front of the house. We'll turn here. Beautiful structures and interest. We look left. So they talk about a ha ha, H A H A, and that is a ditch that they put in that you can't see from the um, the property, and it has wire here, and the cattle do not try to pass. It's kind of like an infinity pool. The land looks like it keeps going for a while, but this ditch comes up to about chest level. Just beautiful. I'm gonna try to keep the camera um, from being too shaky, but it is hard for me sometimes when I'm walking. I wonder if this is called a tulip tree. I'm not sure, you can correct me. I think it's really important to have sitting areas 
in your garden so that it's inviting for you to just sit and take in the beauty of the garden. Down at the end, it looks like we've got beautiful fountains. Three, I'm gonna zoom in here real quick. So this garden has a lot of different rooms and as you enter each room, it's going to give you a different feeling or theme. Again, there's structure that draws your eye down to the end. Turn to the left here slowly. A beautiful walk. We'll take a walk down there, but let's head straight here right now. I love box hedge, as you know, and looking at this box hedge, it's about, uh, you know, you imagine each box hedge is gonna be two foot wide, but about one foot wide is how they are cutting these. And I'd really like to do that for our knot garden and uh, the remaining perimeter of the house to give us more room. But if you look here on both sides, they have allium that has expired, but they have the same theme going through both sides to give you such an impact of color. And so you can have all of the structure on the front guiding the walk and then this beautiful color that's so soothing. And they've uh, repeated blues and white to draw everything together. But let's look at this allium here. So even allium that has, um, is finished blooming really looks beautiful to leave that structure and it'll, you can keep it there dried uh, through the fall. Oh gosh, it's just so relaxing. And then to come through a privet hedge Before we go through, let's take a look back real quick. If we look to the right, a beautiful bench that just begs you to come sit down and take in the view. Let's do that. Oh, I've let everybody go ahead of me so that I can take this in with you all alone. This is so tranquil. Can you imagine just walking through here every day and how relaxing it would be from all of the troubles in the world? Beautiful clematis going up the structure. we've got a lot of whites here. Whites and then the natural leaf. And then let's look down here. So looking down here, you can still have a very structured garden and not have to maintain it to ad nauseum. When you look at just having trees flanking down, of course, to a bench at the end. Let's look at this real quick. We've got trees on the ends as well as the walkway. And then just this beautiful natural walk. Just lovely. And then the view from the bench looking back. Okay, here we are walking back. I love this walk here that they're covering. A young boxwood hedge here. 
but look how narrow they're keeping this boxwood hedge. Gosh, you guys, that is maybe six inches. So I'm gonna have to learn more about to understand how narrow I can keep it. Maybe if I have an opportunity, I will ask the gardeners here. Again, we've got Allium here. I love open gates. That's one of the things that I have found on this trip that I really want to consider adding to the garden because having a gate, it's structural interest, but then having it open just to let people know you're welcome. I really love that. This one says, you're not welcome, but it's still beautiful. Flanking this walk is, um, they look like lollipop trees. Can you see that? Look at them down here, but they have um, these structural trees that are flanking this walkway and another bench facing. What have they cut through? Ah, you guys, it's a tennis court here to watch through. Ah, this takes us back to the walk that we went down, um, the natural walk. So I've taken you down there already. Let's head down this walkway. I didn't see this. And this allows us to watch the game. And then we're back down now at this beautiful box. All right. Beautiful trees. Okay, we're turning left now and I'm seeing structured hedge. We'll turn right. <laughs> I hear the cows. Let's 
sit down on the bench. I see our group over there. And so what I wanna focus here on this view is not only allowing growth on your hard structures like your bricks, but when you plan uh, for areas of plantings, do swaths of color. And I've been adding just say something like this to my garden where I have um, four or five in a row. I love how they have made a triangle here of, it's probably five plants, four plants, three, two, to make this triangle. Then you've got your box hedge. So this is similar to what we've done with our knot garden and then filling the area here um, inside the box. But then if you look down here, now we've got another triangle of say salvia. And so it's building these structural designs um, with your plants to fill an area. Whereas, as I mentioned, I've just been doing a line, maybe another line of another plant. So just something to consider uh, when you're planning your plantings. So let's head down here a little bit. The cows are getting ornery. <laughs> goodness I love animals I love it when I see pictures from you guys with your chickens roaming your gardens that makes me happy I wish we could do that and they have a beautiful piece here flanking another walkway we'll go down and see that in a second let's head down here now I'm curious if they're going to leave these completely open or they may have shared with me that they plant tulips in here, but they have finished growing for the season and uh, finished blooming for the season. And so they've cut them back. I would have never considered putting a planter in the center, but I love this. I really do. That's why I really hope that you all will consider coming on one of these tours. Even if it's a tour, you don't have to go out of the country. But if there is a tour that you have uh, in your local area to find native plants that you can add to your garden, you really get so many ideas. We see peony in here. Another view with box edging the walk lavender paul was just talking to one of the members here mary and he was telling her she said I, I can't grow lavender where i am but i really love this informal um hedge what can i use and paul said russian sage uh, they have so many great varieties now of russian sage why don't you consider planting those very close and creating um, that hedge look that you're looking for. So if you can't grow lavender, consider um, Russian sage. And this looks like a much younger knot garden. All right, so do you remember that walk that we first saw to the left as we came down? Let me walk down here really quick as I have a second to share this with you. I see peonies, clematis growing against the wall. Let me zoom out. So we've got clematis here on the wall. I really want to find out what this is because it's a very, very light blue. Peonies. Climber. They're supporting the tree and pulling it back here. Um, this looks like it's an olive tree, maybe a fruit of tree of some kind. So that's interesting that the support, the tree has grown around the support. We have another support here holding this tree back, but it's really looking 
nice hanging over the walkway, begging you to take a closer look. Let's go ahead and look at this down uh, from the opposite direction. So that takes us back down if we head straight to uh, the fountain and the knock gardens, but what is through this door? Oh, it's a covered pool. Hydrangea, oak leaf hydrangea here to the left, getting ready to bloom. Clematis. So they have um, arches here that are uh, have a tree on each end or each post of the arch. Of course, there's a bench so that you can sit and take in the view. I see a beautiful rose back here. I'm going to zoom in on it. A butterfly bush just starting to bloom. Oh, this must be absolutely beautiful when it's uncovered and you're seeing the reflection of uh, the trees in the, the pool. Oh, look at this beauty. I'm gonna get in close to this. There's a very dark clematis, maybe Giacomini on the wall. And then look. And it has, it's on an obelisk. So you can see it climbing here. And then we've got this beautiful white, much smaller bloom, but still so sweet. And it is also covering an obelisk. More clematis climbing along the wall. An open door welcoming you to come through. Oh, look at this beautiful rambler climbing the structure. It looks like there's two, um, one coming from each side. Can you imagine how beautiful this would be for a wedding garden party? Let's turn around and take a look at where we just came from. Zoom in on this rose. And then back down the side. And the door is somewhat hidden, but here we are back again at this walkway. If we were to head out this other door that was around the side with the, uh, the rose, that would take us over to um, that covered walk of the trees. So let's walk through the other side now, through those trees and see if we can catch up with the group.
so we're back here on that beautiful covered walk and what I love about this is that the trees add shade which makes it feel so much cooler another open door welcoming us Sorry if the camera is shaking, the gravel is a little bit uneasy under my feet, but I do love the calming sound of walking on gravel. And then back into that beautiful knot garden. So we've got flocks here on the side and of course there is a climbing structure and the climbing structure has an opening for each one of the side gardens that we'd walk down but you're drawn and pulled to the main focal point to come take a closer look and So you're pulled to take a closer look and it is so pretty. I wonder if that's a little place to sit over there. It looks like they have a sitting spot on each corner. So let's go sit over here a second and see what that feels like. <laughs> take it in uh, in the way that the garden was intended really it's just so pretty and the, I've been watching the butterflies come and all of the beneficials and just soak in the garden let's zoom in here real quick and have you take a look with me okay so this sundial is just a beautiful focal point but as we saw in the last room you could have a potted tree of your preference uh, in the center it looks like they've recently sheared back the boxwood here to bring the height down when they look like that that's how it is initially when you cut them but they will all start pushing new growth within the next um, I'd say month and then you won't even know that they've been sheared back okay let's head back out and I'll take a look down each side as we go beautiful flocks Let's go. So into this cut garden. Oh, and they've got box hedge in here too, separating each of the uh, like plants so that they all have their own place. 
Let's head down the other side. Looks like they had irises here. So I love symmetry. And so this brings my eyes joy <laughs> when I see both sides of the garden very similar in appearance. Let's head down this one and we see the same room that we were just in. Beautiful. And look at that structure. That's a nice climbing structure. So I anticipate that they've got, I think it's sweet pea that climbs up. I'm thinking, I could be wrong folks, but I think that sweet pea grows really quickly each season. And so by the end of the season, this should be covered. Peonies on the back there. Let's head out of here. We've been down there. Uh, again.
beautiful structure here. Of course, a bench to take in a view. And you're saying, what view are we taking in? Let me show you. Isn't it just breathtaking? I'm telling you, every garden I go through, it's, it's just inspiring and it makes me emotional. We've got Nepeta here. Uh, we've got lots of obelisks. So you know that I did obelisks this year for my uh, uh, Lady of Shalat because she is arching in habit and I think she deserves a little bit of support. So as we saw in the last room that we were in, an obelisk gives visual interest at the beginning of the season before the rose has grown. So you want to buy something that makes you happy uh, to look at for a few months as the rose is growing, but then you'll see if we look back here, the rose is completely covering the entire structure and it just gives the rose the support that they need. Let's get closer and look at how they're tying it in. They're tying in the rose here so that you don't have to tie it to each uh, place where it meets metal, you can tie them together here. So that's really interesting. And then if we look over here, we can see where they have tied it to the support itself. And in this case, they have tied not only here, but then also another cane. So it looks like they're just using easy string to uh, give it the support that it needs. This garden does not have yellows uh, because these are antique roses. She's using roses prior to, I think, uh, 1864. So all old garden roses. These will be mainly one-time bloomers, but with a one-time bloomer, keep in mind, she's, it is seven weeks of blooms. So with our modern roses, a lot of times you'll bloom, they last for five days, and then they start pumping up for their next flush of blooms. In this case, she has seven weeks of fabulous non-stop blooms. I mean, it's really, it's so lovely. And I hope that everybody will consider adding old garden roses. Uh, certainly the modern roses are very hardy and you need to have those in your garden, but I hope that you'll consider a few old garden roses if space will allow um, so that you can have longer blooms. So let's get a quick look at these blooms. how sweet that looks with the, um, the flowers behind. Now, Paul has told me repeatedly <laughs> when I ask him what a perennial is, he said, please download, uh, picture this. I'll put that up on the screen. Picture this is an app that will cost you a few dollars a year, under 10. And if you click on a rose and snap a picture, right there on the website, it is accurate in telling you exactly what you're looking at. So on this trip, I am finding a lot of plants that I love perennial wise that I want to add. So let's go through and I think that's it for this garden. It has been so beautiful. Every garden is just as pretty as the next and you get so many ideas about what you want to add to your garden. I'm really glad during this garden tour that the others on the trip um, didn't think negative of me if I had to step away. I really had to step away to have a moment to myself because the garden was so evoked such emotion for me. 
And the really sad part is my husband took that day off. He stayed back and had a spa day, and so he didn't get to experience. So he'll get to experience, trust me, several times through the videos because we're going to be watching this one over and over and over again. <laughs> so thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one.